Excess iron, also known as iron overload, is a common problem in middle-aged men and postmenopausal women. In today's show, we're going to dive into some blood work from a client of mine and talk about his obvious iron overload and talk about ways to address this. So first, we like to look at metabolic health. We like to look at glucose, insulin, and hemoglobin A1C in one bucket. It's a triad, metabolic health. We look at, in the other bucket, triglycerides, and then over here, we look at liver enzymes. So we want to see how the liver is being impacted by the excessive amounts of glucose, insulin, and the average increased levels of glucose that we characterize as the hemoglobin A1C and fructosamine. We want to look at the liver first. I love to look at liver health, especially in the context of iron overload, because if someone has iron overload, their liver enzymes can increase, which is exactly what we're seeing here. Remember, your liver produces, well, the way that we assess through standard Chem24 and CBC and differential blood work, the way that we triangulate to assess the function of the liver and the overall health of the liver is through three liver function tests known as AST, ALT, and GGT. Again, we go into great detail about all this in my blood work masterclass, but let's look at this. Okay, ideally, the liver function test should be around 16 to 25-ish. But when the ALT and GGT start to increase above 25, we see smoke. And we want to figure out what is causing the smoke. Is it a real fire? Is it transient? Is it Epstein-Barr, cytomegalovirus? Is it alcoholism? Is it fatty liver? Is it iron overload? We don't really know until we do more digging. In this case, we see the ALT is 51 international units per liter. Remember, ideal ranges between 15 and 26 international units per liter. So it's significantly higher. Now, ALT can also be released from the heart in the context of cardiac stress. Now, thankfully, this individual's GGT is quite low. If this was also 51 units, international units per liter, we might be more suspicious. Now, the highest that I have seen this in a client that was abusing anabolic steroids and another client that was a full-blown type 2 diabetic that was unmanaged, I've seen these in the 300s, so they can get excessively high. Now, some people just have genetically higher liver enzymes, but we see right below that the elevated ferritin. So this individual's ferritin levels are 429 nanograms per ml. So I'm immediately suspicious about either dehydration or possibly having hemochromatosis, which is a genetic condition where individuals have elevated levels of ferritin. So we're going to run the hemochromatosis gene test on him to rule that out. Now, ferritin is an acute phase reactant. It, it, it can increase if someone, say, has the flu or uh, influenza or some such thing. So we're going to go down and finish up the, the, the triad of the insulin, glucose, hemoglobin A1C, the liver function tests, and the triglycerides. And then we're also going to look at his hemoglobin, hematocrit, and RBC. These are really important markers to look at to rule out blood viscosity and blood thickness, which is why we care about elevated levels of iron in the first place. But friends, I just want to pause and thank you all for being here. And I want to thank this video show sponsor, the good folks over at bondcharge.com, the makers of an amazing array of health promoting tools, including the at-home infrared sauna blanket. They have the PEMF mat, which is awesome for grounding. And my personal favorite, their blue light blocking glasses, which are awesome. They come in a wide array of different frames that look good. There's different tints. If you want the full-blown orange tint or the yellow tint or the white clear tint that I use when I'm out in public, if I'm traveling at night, for example, or doing a lot of computer work, this can help reduce eye strain. So you can focus better and you're not taxing your eyes, which is really important. But they're also good to wear at night because you want to minimize the exposure to artificial light at night because that can compromise your body's sleep-wake cycles, reduce melatonin, in, reduce growth hormone, and there's a whole downstream litany of side effects that are uh, associated with that. So you can save on these amazing blue light filtering glasses by going to bondcharge.com for slash HIH, and you can use the coupon code HIH at checkout to save. Again, Bond Charge is, is an amazing company. They have so many great health promoting tools. So definitely check out the offerings that they have and save on those amazing glasses. Now, getting back to the iron overload, I, I can't stress this enough for middle aged men and postmenopausal women. This is something that we should really consider. And when we go down into the Chem24, we look at the RBC, the hemoglobin hematocrit. These are all elevated, as you can see here. The hematocrit is 54.2%. So this individual has increased blood viscosity, which is problematic. We hear so much about LDL cholesterol, how LDL cholesterol becomes modified or oxidized and can in increase the probability of forming atherosclerotic plaque. Well, it turns out 
that increase blood thickness create shear stress that too can exacerbate the formation of atherosclerotic plaque, leading to a stroke, an aneurysm, or possibly even a heart attack. So this individual is a good candidate for both healthy hydration, so we're thinking electrolytes, we're thinking creatine, filtered water, sauna therapy would be beneficial, walking after meals. Uh, if one is sitting for prolonged periods of time, getting up and moving and walking, especially on airplanes at altitude, and yeah, we, we see that the hemoglobin is also pretty elevated at 18.2 grams per deciliter. So blood donation is something that I'm thinking about here after ruling out hydration problems. Okay, so because his ferritin, along with the RBC, hemoglobin and hematocrit are pretty high, I'm going to recommend this individual get tested for the genetic condition known as hemochromatosis. And so we will follow up with that. But let's go back to the traditional metabolic parameters that I mentioned here. We want to look at the glucose and insulin along with hemoglobin A1C. So his glucose fasting is 89 milligrams per deciliter, nothing out of the ordinary there. Hemoglobin A1C is 5.3%, so everything looks really good there. Uh, insulin was run and it was only 3.1, which is great. So we would suspect that his triglycerides will be quite low. Now let's confirmed that his triglyceride levels were, as I mentioned, quite low, 39 milligrams per deciliter. So this is a very interesting phenomenon where this individual has really high levels of iron, high levels of hemoglobin and uh, hematocrit are quite high. And it seems that that's putting some stress on his liver because the, the ALT was 51 international units per liter but the other markers of poor metabolic health are not high. So we suggest some sort of hepatic stress. So I'm going to recommend to this individual, in addition to hydration, electrolytes, creatine, to help with hydration. We know that creatine can help tug water into your cells. We know electrolytes help increase the absorption of creatine. So those two work synergistically hand in hand, which is great. Triglycerides are really low, 39 milligrams per deciliter, which is uh, quite phenomenal. But again, we're going to recommend the NAC glycine because that can help support the liver. A lot of people think about milk thistle and the liver, but you need to, need to recognize that even in mainstream medical settings where individuals overdose with acetaminophen or Tylenol, um, uh, an acetylcysteine is administered to those individuals to help with the hepatic stress of that. So oral NAC glycine, we're going to recommend uh, a gram and a half up to three grams per day in the evening time. Now, we also know that his metabolic health is actually quite good because if we go down to the VLDL, we see his VLDL is quite low. It's at two, two milligrams per deciliter. That's really low. Sometimes I've seen this as high as 50. His C-reactive protein, quite low, 37 milligrams per liter, which is good. Everything regarding thyroid looks good. Vitamin D levels look great at 49.1 nanograms per ml, which is uh, fantastic. Now, his fibrinogen activity is a little bit higher than I like to see at 248 milligrams per deciliter. Nothing alarming there. But what is alarming is his relatively high ApoB to A1 ratio. Again, we like to see this around 0.5. His is 0.9, uh, suggesting that his ApoB is pretty high, but the ApoA1 is not high. So we are going to recommend um, a lot more exercise for him. He does a lot of uh, his job is quite physical, but we're going to recommend exercise. And then... We also uh, looked at his lipoprotein little a, and this is quite high, my friends. This is 163 nanomoles per liter. Ideally, this is under 15. So we have some work to do with this individual. Uh, we need to look at his diet a little bit more closely, make sure that we're not uh, having excessive amounts of you know, sometimes when people go on a low carb style diet, they can sometimes overdo some of the dietary fats. We want to look at that. Um, but the LP little a being high in isolation wouldn't be a big deal, but is iron, ferritin, hemoglobin, hematocrit are all excessively high. So the combination of a high LDL and high lipoprotein little a in the environment or the milieu of increased blood viscosity is something that I I actually do get concerned about, and people might argue uh, with that, but I think that we should be aggressively looking at ways to lower his ferritin, hemoglobin, hematocrit with hydration, as well as um, pl blood donation. So donating blood two times a year for this person is going to be something that I'm going to recommend, but pretty much everything else looks pretty good as we look through here. So in conclusion, iron overload or increased ferritin, hemoglobin, hematocrit, 
can create sheer stress within the cardiovascular system, and that can be problematic. And so uh, a poor man's way of ameliorating this would be blood donation and also supporting hydration and exercise and then supporting the liver. Obviously, because the liver function tests, the ALT is quite high, that could be um, supported with N-acetylcysteine and glycine. So what are your thoughts, my friends? If you enjoyed this content, please hit that like button. If you want to learn more about blood work analysis and how to optimize your health, you can check out the blood work masterclass. And if you're on computers and LED uh, emitting devices in the evening time, definitely check out Bond Charges. Amazing blue light filtering glasses are fantastic. I use them all the time. We'll catch you on the next video. Thanks for tuning in.